Okay, so welcome back to another Cosmo repair video. This is going to show you how to fix the arms on your robot. If uh, if you've got young kids or if you dropped your robot on the floor, you might notice that it's not as strong as it once was and it's struggling to pick up the cubes uh, and do his flips and wheelies and stuff like that. Um, this model is actually working fine, but I'm going to show you the process because I'm aware that online a lot of people are talking about the fact that they can fix this without any buying any spare parts you just use what is already in the robot and they talk about spinning the cog and spinning the wheel so just to explain what they're talking about here i thought i'd um, break this unit down uh, go through it step by step and explain exactly how you can go ahead and fix the robot yourself without having to buy any replacement pieces um, and that will all become evident uh, in time so if you know how to strip the robot down please do scrub to the timeline listed here if you just want to go straight to the fix um, but this is just going to show you me stripping the robot down explaining the steps uh, keeping everything um, in some semblance of order so you can uh, work backwards when you're finished and work your way back through the uh, through the video. So removing the arms, and you've probably seen me do this before on previous videos, you just keep the arms raised as high as you can, you remove that post from the top, uh, and then you just pop them off, it's like suction based on that uh, right hand side of the robot there, and that cog is what we want to get access to here, ultimately, because that's what we're going to be doing the repair on. Um, so stripping the, uh, the, 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 the trail off the wheels now, we're going to be removing three wheels. Um, this is going to be like the most efficient way to strip the robot down. Ordinarily I would take them all off, but for the purposes of this video and just to get access to the gearbox, we're going to leave that back wheel on the right hand side that we're going to leave that free. Now when you um, pop the wheel caps off, I've just showed you here what can happen if you're not very careful. Um, just you know, stick a little nail file or what have you uh, in the little uh, open grooves and keep it covered so that you can actually pop the wheel caps off without them uh, pinging all over your uh, kitchen counter like what just happened there. Um, pop the wheel caps off and that'll reveal the um, the first of the screws that you need to get access to. You can do this whole repair with one screwdriver providing it's a, uh, a very narrow gauge um, Phillips head or posi drive, whatever you want to call it. And uh, take it easy when you're actually um, unscrewing a lot of these um, uh, peripherals like the wheels and the uh, uh, the uh, the insides of it because the the metal that's used in these screws is not exactly high caliber you can actually strip the head quite easy uh, and even the thread as well because it's you know the, the, these threads drive straight into the plastic body so do uh, take your time when you do that but obviously once you've removed the three wheels leave that back wheel on as it is um, and then you're free to move on to the head now again I normally deconstruct the head uh, fully because I give it a deep clean and everything else but for the purposes of this video and to so you can follow along we're just going to take the screws out of one side of the head so if you pop that little red clip off um, that's covering the uh, the two little screws that are in place you're only going to remove those there's two other screws on the other side of the head but it will become evident why we're not going to remove them in a second because uh, I had some quite helpful comments on a previous video uh, who someone who did this repair and said that putting the head back together was actually quite painful and took a long time and they realized that by just taking off one set of screws it actually makes it easier so if you the top bit there on the head the cap that's like the aerial if you pull that up the rest of the assembly just comes apart no bother really um, it's spring loaded as well so as I say be careful uh, make sure that things don't go flying off and try and keep all the parts uh, in order as well so that it's easier to put them back so the screen just rests um, inside the head there on a post now the, the, those two posts that you see sticking up there have actually got two screws in them so if you leave them in, it makes it a lot better to put it back together. There's a little spring just fell out there. Now, for, obviously, for anyone who's doing this for the first time, that spring sits in the uh, right-hand side of the head, and that just holds the assembly together. When, you, when you're reassembling it, make sure you've got that back in place. Um, here we've got the, uh, the Cosmo robot face, which is just like a little OLED panel. That's just connected by a little three-pin lead. Um, that comes off easy enough. Again, it makes sense to work this in sections so if you keep all the head parts together and the wheels and the arms and then you can work backwards uh next we're moving on to the uh, the little red back plate cover that's um just sits behind the head there there's two more screws that hold that in place uh, again take your time when you uh, when you're taking these out because the last thing you want to do is strip the screw and then you be in trouble and you won't be able to uh, to, to continue um, so if you take your time, get that little red back plate off, it just slides off again, get a spudger in there or, or something if you haven't got any fingernails like me. Um, the next part is the front bumper, now this sits just underneath the head and there's two little Phillips head screws that are holding that in place um, and they wrap around the front edge of the body so uh, again just 
take your time, get everything ready, keep keep all the screws and keep all the parts uh, together as you're working through. There's two more screws recessed here in the left-hand side of the uh, Cosmo robot. And it's worth mentioning that all the screws here, with the exception of one, are all the same size, they're all the same gauge. So you can effectively mix and match, you can put them in different places, but I would recommend you keep them in order. Uh, and at this point, we've just got one more screw to remove, and that's in the central column that's holding the body together. Uh, and that is the only screw that differs in size from all these other ones that you've uh, so far taken out of the robot. So definitely do put that to one side and keep that separate because um, you need that extra length to uh, to keep the uh, the column together. The, the top bit, the power button and the LED array, that just pops off, that one clips like that, there's nothing holding that in place. Um, and at this point then you're free to pry the two halves of the robot together, no, uh, apart, sorry. Now as you do this, um, watch out for that small metal counterweight that sits in the back end of the robot, just covering the battery terminals. That uh, is the counterweight so that that allows the robot to basically lift his cubes without tipping over and if he wants to, you know, pop wheelies and stuff like that. Um, and here we are. Here is the gearbox assembly for the arms. So we need to free this up from the body. There's two more little Phillips head screws there, two large Phillips head screws that are holding it in place. If you just want to unscrew it, um, releases it from the, uh, the side of the body there, as you can see. Now, it's connected to the main board by a series of um, leads and cables and stuff. Uh, just clips in so at this point, you know, I was contemplating should I just leave it attached, you know, for the for the purposes of this video and to sort of You know cut down on unnecessary Disconnections and, and disassembly, but I figured to actually do this repair if you're gonna do it and you're gonna do it Right, you may as well just disconnect it from the board So if you just take a firm grip on the uh, on the cables make sure obviously you, you you don't pull the cables Individually, but you should just be able to free that from the uh, the main board and then that's, this is what you're left with. This is the actual gearbox assembly that we need to get access to. So there's four smaller screws in here that are holding the actual gearbox together. You can see them there. You should be able to open them up with uh, the, the screwdriver that you've got. If you've so far not had any problems removing the, the, the other screws, then these should be fine as well. But these are smaller. They're definitely smaller than the screws that are holding the, uh, the body of the robot together. So, um, just take extra care with, with keeping them separate. Um, once you've removed them, obviously, um, you do need to be careful that no, you know none of the parts or anything fall out. So once you've removed them here, and we'll see it in the video shortly, try and orient the gearbox um, in the same way that I'm holding it. So you'll have like a tab at the bottom there and try and keep it facing up. So when that you lift the cover, here we are. Now we can see here, there's a number of cogs here and the red arrows there are where you will see wear and tear on the, the teeth of the cogs because there's only those few teeth that are actually in contact with the rest of the gearbox and in contact with the rest of the assembly. You can see here that someone's took a picture of uh, their cog which has got a stripped a missing tooth because they dropped it on the floor. And that is what will stop your robot from picking it up. Now that person's very creative and they actually made an STL file of the, the, the cog that needs to be replaced. So if you've got a 3D printer, I would recommend a resin printer, you could actually print some spare parts for this uh, and get it working. I've only got an FDM printer, so I've only got PLA filament, so I can't actually go down this repair road. But if we actually look at the, um, the layout of the wheel itself, all we're gonna do is lift the cog up out of the assembly by literally a few millimeters and rotate it 180 degrees. And what that is gonna do is that is effectively gonna move the broken teeth in the assembly in the cog to the other side of the wheel and we're going to reseat it so you see here imagine if those those the teeth were, were uh, busted we're going to lift the wheel slightly off the pin rotate it 180 degrees and then reseat it on the assembly and that's going to bring fresh teeth into contact with the rest of the gearbox and basically that will that will put it back to new because the broken teeth then are on the other side of the wheel and because of the limited movement of the wheel of the arms um, th those broken teeth are never going to cause you any problems again so it's just a case of then working backwards if you get stuck please do get in touch in the comments below but I'm sure you'll be fine thank you for your time thank you for watching please do consider subscribing and I'll speak to you again soon